All right, so welcome back to our little barn house bathroom makeover. Today is day 10. It doesn't seem like we've been here this long, but it's been 10 days. So anyway, yesterday we got all of the subway tile installed, except for down uh, underneath the ledger. There's two rows we got to put in today. We also have to put in the little shower corner tray thing right here, and then that little sliver of tile to fit the side. And uh, that'll be a whole little thing too. And once we get done with that, we're not going to grout just yet. We'll probably wait for a, a different day to do that. But we're going to try to move on to the flooring and get it done. And uh, the one problem with the flooring is you can't walk on it for a while. So I don't know if we'll be able to do much after that or not. So I guess we'll find out. But first of all, let's get the rest of the tiles up. All right, so I need to pull this ledger board off. And if you remember, we just used masking tape. I have about three layers of, I don't know, inch and a half, two inch wide masking tape back there. Three globs of hot glue. I put on a board. I think this is a little scrap board I got from Ikea. There we go. That one's come off pretty good. I did notice that the masking tape comes off of Red Guard really nicely, but we previously had some that was over paint over uh, Red Guard, and it kind of pulled it up and bubbled it, but we were really lucky that that wasn't a spot that was going to get a lot of water, so you might want to be careful with that and only get it on the Red Guard. It seems to be coming off okay. Let me try this one over here now. Uh, another trick I tried yesterday, I don't think I mentioned, when we put them up, if they felt a little wobbly, I kind of welded it by adding more hot glue on the edge of the board where it meets the tape, and then also where the two boards meet down here. It just kind of added a little extra security. But that worked well. I guess I should pull off the masking tape. Look at that. That's nice. I wish I would have done this in our downstairs bathroom, because down there, when we did it, we just put screws through it. So then we had to fill them in and make sure they're okay. But this worked awesome, it held. I was surprised at how strong that hot glue was. So I'll pull the other one off and then we'll get these prepped for tiles. Now that the ledger boards are off, there's a little bit of the uh, mortar that seeped underneath the uh, tiles here. So I'm just kind of chipping it away with a screwdriver and a hammer. I'm being careful not to mess up my uh, red guard waterproofing underneath there. So once I get all this off, We'll uh, start getting it prepped for the uh, tiles. Now it's time to go ahead and do the tile. And uh, I went ahead and did it on the back wall first and to kind of figure out my technique before I show it here on video. But uh, I think I got it figured out pretty good. So basically, I mean, if you're doing regular subway tile, like you know, I mentioned, you're, you're two rows ahead. So the first row is no problem. You could just put them in. And then the bottom row will all have to get custom cut. But because we're doing this basket weave pattern, all of them have to get cut. So what I'm doing is standing my tiles up where they're supposed to be and I'm taking a little sharpie and I'm marking the bottom of the old tile or not the old tile but the one that's already installed I'm marking that All right so that's how the uprights go and then when I take it out to my saw I'm actually going to cut a little bit in the, uh, under that line because I want these once they're mounted to not sit down on the pan I want them to be about an eighth of an inch off kind of like I have here so that's how I did the upright for the ones that are going long ways and probably the way you do it if you're running a regular subway tile, okay? First one I put up just like normal. And then this one I set on the ground. And then I am tracing the top. Okay. And now when they get mounted, they'll be reversed. So this one will be the full one. And that's the one that gets cut. And again, when I cut that line, I'll cut just inside that line. And my blade out there is almost an eighth of an inch, so it's, it'll get us pretty close. So once we cut, it should fit. And uh, it's a little tricky because it may not all be quite the same. The bottom of these might be a little off, even if your ledger seems straight. So there's a lot of test fitting in this area. So you'll, you know, once we put our, uh, or our uh, mortar up here and stick them up, uh, I mean, you might have to test them a little bit just to see. But anyway, a few cuts, whatever. It's not too big a deal. It's a little bit extra work, but we'll get these all stuck up. And then once they're all done, then I'm just taking masking tape and I'm sticking it on the bottom one first, then the second one, and then coming up here. And that helps hold them in place to keep them from sliding down on the mortar. And then once it's all done, I just put another one across to kind of secure them. So it's a little bit tricky, but it's not, it's not too bad. Just brought them all in from getting cut and I'm test fitting and they actually all look pretty good there's a good even about one eighth of an inch gap down there if it was a little big 
I might recut another tile a little smaller, and of course if it's too small, I'd uh, cut it just a little bit more. But these all look pretty good. I've been test fitting them. They look fine, so I think it's ready to go ahead and put the mortar on there and go for it. All right, so I'm going to put on some of that mortar, and it's going pretty good. And this is that tech brand again that we had to do this wall in yesterday. It kind of smells like a frozen chocolate banana. <laughs> kind of green color too. The other stuff he uses is more of a white beige and this is kind of a weird color but it works fine. So let's get some on there and of course my shower pan. I want to wipe that up. I don't want anything down there so probably should do that after I do it because I'm sure I will get more all over the place. But anyway once these go up I'll start sticking the tiles all the way up to the bull nose. All right, putting in the tiles and Basically, I started with this one to make sure it's lining up here because I want that to look good. And then over here, we're going to caulk it anyway. So if it's a little off, it don't matter. Put that one up top. Squish it in real good. Put the bottom one that we sliced a little off the bottom there. Put it up. Squish it down. And then I'll just run tape on all of them. Start the bottom and then kind of pull up on it. Set it up like this and it'll be good to go and I'll just keep finishing out and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. And here's that bottom row all finished. Looks pretty good. Got it taped up. We're going to let it sit and harden up before we uh, do grout. So we don't plan on doing grout today or maybe not even tomorrow because we got some other things we've got to do. So now the last thing we have to do in the shower is put in that corner and uh, it's a little bit tricky so I'll show you how I plan on doing it. So here's the box that has the uh, shower corner shelf. And uh, reading, reading the instructions, I'm going to mount it a little different than they say. They say to uh, put it on the tile, use an adhesive, and wait for the adhesive curse. <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to avoid a curse here, and we're going to go ahead and use grout. So uh, let me show you. It's a little bit uh, tricky. you got to really glob it on. And then this thing, when we mounted the one in our uh, shower downstairs, it was it, the front end was kind of leaning up a little bit so water pools in it so we're going to make sure this time that the front end leans down so water comes out and then uh, we still have to cut that little bit of a sliver over here but we'll probably do that after it's installed so here's where i'm definitely not being professional but i want to make sure this thing is really stuck on there and uh, i'm just slapping it on there it's too big to really get my trowel in there so i'm putting a bunch in you can kind of see how the little there's like a lip to it so it's not even quite the full width so that's why i'm not quite going all the way to the edge there just going thick, and then on the back of this, I'm going to do the same thing. Just slap it on real good. And you can see that this, this side is just nice and smooth, but this side has holes, and those actually kind of rip. So make sure you get plenty of the uh, mortar on there, and that mortar will go in the hole and harden up. It kind of becomes like a ceramic-style hook, almost. I'll put a bunch on there, make a huge mess here. more all right let me wipe my hand off real quick and then i'll uh, stick it on all right so it's time to stick it on so just shove it in the corner really push it in we got tons so that's that's good that it's kind of coming out oh yeah look at that now i'm gonna take my little level this is what we this is where we messed up when we did uh the downstairs bathroom we didn't do this part and for some reason our shelf down there it leans back a little bit so it always keeps water but it has a little lip right here for water to come out so i'm going to check to make sure that is leaning down and if it were level it would be up here so that's like a good i don't know if you can see that or not that's probably a good quarter inch drop so i think that's probably pretty good okay so really really get that in there and the water will pour off now you don't want to just leave it here, you want to be able to support it. So I'm going to do kind of like I did on the bottom tiles, we're going to tape it. So I'm going to wrap some tape underneath the bottom here, and then just stick it up to the tiles up here that have been setting overnight. And then if you wanted to, you could probably even put a stick under here just so it doesn't come off, but I think this is actually pretty good. And before you get too much tape, I should probably wipe off the extra mortar so it's not like crazy thick in there. And you probably want to use a lot of tape too. I'm using like inch and a half wide tape and I cut five or six pieces and I'll put them all on there just to hold it. But before I get too much, I'll go ahead and wipe that out. 
and that's pretty much it and it should be should be good I'll go ahead and fill that in we still got to cut a little tiny piece to go right here um, I can probably really probably get away with caulking it later because it looks bad now but when we tile every or when we uh, grout everything we'll go ahead and grout there just a little bit just to kind of fill in some of the really bad uh, gaps but then eventually you know most of the tile gets grout but the corners are going to get caulk and then I'm also going to caulk around here, around all the way around the bottom and back down here. And then uh, I'll probably caulk around the bottom of the shower pan too. That was the install. This feels really nice and secure. I already feel more confident than our last one we did. So I think that'd be pretty good. Okay, so here it is all installed. You can see that it's nice and level this way and it's nice and unlevel this way. It slopes down. So if it was actually level, it'd have to be way up here. So it's a good quarter inch drop or so. So I think water will come out of there just fine. And uh, just smacked a lot of tape on there and then I secured them up here to keep them from falling down and then to hold the bottom up what I found is that the uh, mortar was letting it just the back of it just ever so slightly start sliding down so I actually stuck my four foot level back there in the back corner and then down there on the ground I just taped it in place so it's not going to slip so we will just let that sit all day and uh, probably take all this off tomorrow we'll let it sit all night I think it'll be good but uh, it wasn't wasn't too bad an installation. Also, this little gap right here, um, I actually put in the end of one of the little pieces that I cut for the bottom. I had one that just happened to fit perfectly, and it's not the greatest looking piece, but it doesn't matter because we'll caulk over most of it anyway. So that's how you saw the little corner thing. I know it's a little bit big in our shower, but it's just kind of off the shelf, easy to use, and it is pretty handy. Now that the uh, tiles are in on the bottom, and also that shelf is drying. We're going to start finally working on the floor. We're going to get rid of these really nasty stick-on vinyl tiles. Really ugly. And uh, they should come up pretty easy. So let me show you some measuring I'm going to do first. So when these come off, we actually have to put underlayment on here, which is this really thin Luan wood. It's like a quarter inch thick. And I'm just going to staple it down everywhere. And then uh, it'll make it nice and level. And then we can put the tile glue on that and put the tiles down. So I'm just getting a rough idea of how to lay out my Luan. It comes in sheets that are four foot by eight foot. And uh, I've learned after doing our kitchen and our bathroom downstairs that I think you have less problems if the seams for the underlayment do not match up with the seams of your tiles. So my floor here is eight feet long. So halfway is right here at 48. So my sheets are four by eight. So I could put a seam here but I feel that um, you put two seams together and then you put a little bit of this filler in there. And I feel like, it, you know, the, the two might like one to kind of form a little peak or something eventually if the house moves and right, that would be right where tiles are. And I think they would come up and there'd be a little bit of a, a shift. I don't want that. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually build this piece back here out to uh, this line right here meet this corner because it is like halfway in a tile and I'd feel okay with the seam underneath that tile. So we're going to come out to, I think it, I wrote it down here, it's uh, 65 and three quarter inches. Anyway, we're going to come out that far. So I'm going to put a seam right here. So this is going to be one solid sheet right here. It's going to come out to four feet. And the cool thing about that is four feet is way over here, almost to the uh, like toe board of the cabinet. So we're not going to be walking on a seam right there either. So this is one solid sheet. So it should lay nice and good. And then uh, over here would be a little tiny filler piece. And then right here in front of the shower is just a square with a little bit of a notch to uh, fit there. And that will be a piece itself. So I'll go ahead and cut them out. And once we put them in, you'll kind of understand, understand a little better. But we're just trying to keep it real simple so that seams of the underlayment don't match up with seams of the tile we're going to lay. That's going to be the hole for the toilets. So we got all of the underlayment fitted and our measurements were all a little off of course, like usual. So we had to do some extra cutting, but they finally fit. We're just test fitting them now. We're going to pull them back up, pull those old tiles off that have all the mortar and stuff on them. One mistake I did make a while ago that would have made my life a lot easier here is that when I uh, measured out this piece, I should have cut over here on this end and had a factory cut edge here. That way there, this is a factory edge on this piece. This is a custom piece. So you can kind of see it's a little off. So when we put some uh, leveler in there to kind of fill that in, it's, you know, I'm had to add more than if it was a, a good factory joint, but it's not that big a deal. You can kind of see we had to cut to fit around the walls a little bit. 
but all the little gaps they'll be covered by trim. It will actually be covered by the tiles we put in and then over trim anyway. So, I mean, as you can see, they're a little wobbly because there's like mounds of mortar in here. So, we'll pull them out, and the floor tiles are now coming off, and uh, we'll see what's under that. Probably some staples and glue chunks we might have to pull off. But we'll get that going because these floors are getting done tonight. They have to. We're peeling the uh, peeling set of tiles off now. It's coming okay. But once that stuff peels off and leaves it black, it's getting even harder. And there's a huge layer of adhesive on the floor. So check this out. I'll show you a really cool trick. Ah, so this is fun. <laughs> Whoa. So one of the things that's really annoyed me about this bathroom is the squeak. And we finally figured out what it is once we got all the tiles off. I think it's this nail right here. So to fix that, I'm just going to put some screws in there. And you can see the nail heads, the old nail heads. So I'm just going to put screws next to all those, just kind of in this general area. And hopefully that'll take care of the squeak. So I went ahead and drove in screws all around here, probably I don't know, 10 or 12, however many nails there are. Check it out. No squeak. Just stick. We got the underlayment in. Here's the first piece. And uh, to install it, you can see it has all these X's everywhere. That's where you can like put a nail or what I'm using is staples. The nails you use are little ring shank nails and it takes forever to hammer them all in. Plus when you hammer, the hammer head leaves a indent in the wood and then you gotta put like a little bit of a leveler over it. So I'm just using some staples. These are seven eighths of an inch long and they're quarter, they're a, one quarter inch crown, which is really narrow staples, and it's not exactly the most recommended way of doing this if you could find wider, but it's really actually hard to find wider. But they just hit each of the X's and pop in the staples. Now, I don't know if you can skip around if you don't have to do it as many or not, but I'm just gonna do them all to make sure that this doesn't move on us. So once this is in, the seams will have to be filled with a little bit of uh, seam filler like a floor level or compound, and then you have to let it dry. I was really hoping we could get the uh, floor tiles in tonight, but I totally forgot you have to let that dry, so that's probably not gonna happen until tomorrow. So I'll uh, put the rest of this in and show you what the underlay <laughs> underlayment looks like when it's in. faster than hammering in a nail in every single one of those. Now that all my underlayment is stapled down, it's time to go ahead and fill the seams with some uh, floor patch leveler. All right, so this stuff is, it's almost like grout, it's really sandy and it kind of dries quick. So you have to really stir it up, get it nice and smooth, and then just plop some down on your seams and smooth it out. Now, uh, on my seam here, you can see this is where I made that mistake earlier. This, this piece has the factory clean cut edge and then this has my sawed edge. So you can see how it opens up down here, it's so bad. So I have to put a bunch down here. Plus my um, uh, sub floors were just slightly off, just a little bit. One was just slightly higher than the other. So I'm gonna put a lot down here and I just kind of feather it out so it's nice and smooth. And uh, because I use staples, I don't have to put any over the little indents from the staples, the little, you know, where they punch through. But if you had hammered uh, nails in all these, the hammer head usually leaves a little bit of a dip. And because of the type of tiles I'm using, the VCT, the vinyl tiles, once you, you know, walk on it long enough, you'll actually see those little tiny dips. So you'd have to sit here and patch every single one of those nail heads. So that's why staples are, you know, not only are they faster, but it's less work this way too. But anyway, I'm just gonna plop some down here and then just smooth it out with the flat side of the trowel really fill in those seams and then like I said my uh, subfloor was a little off so I'll kind of feather it off to one side a little bit and you want to make sure it's nice and smooth like right now I don't know how well it shows on camera but there's a little bit of a lip probably a sixteenth of an inch and that's too much you got to have this really really smooth because it, it will transfer through a uh, vinyl flooring or a vinyl tile and if you're doing regular tiles with the uh, you know, like a ceramic tile or something like that, it's not going to matter as much. But for the type I'm using, it will. So I'll just get nice and smooth. And uh, I was reading the back of the container and it said that you have to let it dry for several hours, like three to 16 hours, 
Well, if I do that tonight, it's going to be way too late. So um, I'll just have to put it on tonight, clean it up tomorrow because it'll get real, it's going to leave like the sandy stuff everywhere. I'll have to sweep it up. And then tomorrow I can finally put down my VCT, my vinyl tiles. And uh, this place will look really awesome then. So let me finish this up. I'll kind of show you how mine turned out. And that's probably about all I'll get done tonight. And here it is all finished. This is the seam kind of in front of the vanity. All I had to do was smooth that one in because they were nice and flat. But the one over here at the wall in front of the shower, I had to feather it out just a little bit. It looks nice and smooth. I had to really work it. But doing both of these only took maybe about 20, 25 minutes. It wasn't too bad at all. And uh, that's pretty much how you put down the under underlayment. So I was really hoping to get the uh, VCT tiles in today. But it's just not going to happen. But we'll, we'll knock them out tomorrow and knock out a bunch of other small little things too. So there you go. We got the subway tiles finished in the shower. And they are hardening up and we're going to get them grouted here pretty soon. And I also got that uh, quarter shower shelf in too. That was a little bit tricky. It's still hanging by the tape and has the... Uh, level underneath it, but I'm going to let that just sit like that overnight. And then I finally got the underlayment in after a little bit of tricky measuring and cutting to get them to finally go in. And then we leveled them out, and now we're in the waiting game again to get those tiles in. We were a little bummed. We were really hoping to get those in, but it's just what happens. So anyway, thanks for checking out today's video. Tomorrow we're going to make a lot bigger changes than kind of happened today, so stay tuned. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I really appreciate that. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. That really helps get it out in front of other people that might like to check it out too. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that to keep up with more videos. And if you want to see some other projects I have, I have some here on the screen and down in the description below as well.